1905 earthquakes. 4 exceeded a magnitude 6.0. Continued unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks! I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is September the 25th, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from September the 17th through September the 23rd. It was on this day in 2003, when a magnitude 8.3 struck Japan. At least 589 people were injured, extensive damage was experienced, along with landslides and power outages, and many roads were damaged in southeastern Hokkaido. A tsunami was generated with an estimated wave height of 13 feet which affected areas along the southeastern coast of Hokkaido. This is what's happening. A terrified plane passenger finds herself sitting next to Creepy Doll with its own ticket for two flights. An unlucky plane passenger documented her bizarre experience of being sat next to a doll on two flights. Sarah Novik ended up next to a man who booked a seat for the figure he referred to as Barbara on a trip to Cincinnati. The mystery flyer and his doll were visiting a giant Noah's Ark replica built to specification and the Creation Museum. Sarah from Brooklyn tweeted, Good news. No person in the middle seat next to me. The bad news is, a terrifying baby doll that belongs to the man in the window seat next to me. Miss Novick, a writer, claimed the flight attendant told the man not to book under Barbara's name next time they fly. It has been reported that the ticket was bought under the doll's name using a fake passport and went and challenged until airline staff noticed. Miss Novick shared the first picture of the doll before departing the plane on a two-hour layover. But to her dismay when she got onto another jet, the doll was next to her again. She added, I'm on her right side this time, in case you need a better view. On the bright side, Barbara was a very well-behaved baby. Just kidding, this has been terrible. Do not use Google's new Allo messaging app if you care about your privacy, warns Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden has given a stock warning not to use Google's new Allo messaging app, which launched this week. The NSA whistleblower claims that the smart messaging app, which integrates Google's virtual assistant, does not feature important privacy measures that the tech firm said it would have. Speaking in a series of tweets, the security experts said that the app should be completely avoided. Allo is a Google app that records every message you ever send and makes it available to police upon request, said Snowden. This is without a warrant, folks. The same applies to the usage of other Google applications like Hangouts. So, please beware. YouTube to fight trolls by hiring army of trolls to delete videos they disagree with. YouTube is set to fight the trolls by giving an army of trolls the power to mass flag and delete content with which they disagree, opening the door to brazen political censorship in a move that has been slammed by numerous prominent YouTubers. In a video posted this week, YouTube announced its Heroes program, which turns censorship into a game by allowing users to earn points and ascend to new levels. Once a user reaches the higher levels, they are given the power to report inappropriate videos, mass flag videos and delete comments. The video features a cartoon portrayal of someone mass flagging videos for deletion via dashboard. The policy is so unpopular that it has received over 415,000 thumbs down compared with just over 7,000 thumbs up. The backlash was so vitriolic that YouTube has disabled the comments on the video. YouTube is apparently unaware of the fact that although censoring the internet in countries like North Korea is tolerated, 
It's extremely unpopular in the West. You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over there when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 1905 earthquakes. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 7,352. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 307 quakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.2 which originated from the northern Mariana Islands. Once again, we were presented with an incredibly interesting week. We experienced unusual movement in rare locations and powerful earthquakes. As previously stated, we registered four earthquakes that fell within or exceeded the magnitude 6 category. We will begin with a 6.3 that struck the Philippines on Friday, September the 23rd. This strong earthquake originated just off the Philippines Mindanao Island, sending hotel guests and construction workers running from buildings. The United States Geological Survey said the quake, initially reported as a magnitude 6.5, struck at 6.53 a.m. local time, and was centered 89 miles east of Davao on Mindanao. Also on the 23rd, we experienced a 6.2 that hit Katsura, Japan. This earthquake struck about 80 miles off the east coast of Japan at a depth of about 6 miles on Friday. The U.S. Geological Survey reported. The Japanese city nearest to the quake is Katsura with a population of about 22,300. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center did not issue a tsunami warning related to the earthquake. The USGS said there have been at least 10 aftershocks in the wake of the Temblor, measuring from magnitudes of a 4.5 and up to a 5.3. On Tuesday, September the 20th, the Japan region experienced a 6.1. Originally estimated to be a 6.3, this earthquake struck a sparsely populated area known as Izu Islands, which is southeast of Japan's main island of Honshu, the Japan Meteorological Agency reported. The U.S. Geological Survey said the quake hit around 1.21 a.m. in Japan with its epicenter about 382 miles south-southeast of Tokyo at a depth of 6.2 miles. The Japan Meteorological Agency said although there might be slight sea level changes in coastal regions, the earthquake caused no damage to Japan and did not generate a tsunami. Finally, our friends in Vanuatu experienced a magnitude 6.0 earthquake on Saturday, September the 17th. For those interested, Vanuatu is an island nation in the South Pacific Ocean. The earthquake hit about 4 miles northeast of Norsep at 2.31 p.m. on Saturday. Its epicenter was located at a depth of about 23 miles. There were no reports on damages or casualties and a tsunami was not generated. The Vanuatu Islands are part of the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire Quake Zone, where about 90% of the world's earthquakes occur. In total, we experienced 32 magnitude 5 plus earthquakes strike the globe this past week. This was a 37% increase in registered quakes when compared to the previous week. As you would expect. These earthquakes were centered mostly along the Ring of Fire, with Indonesia, once again seeing the most activity. This equates to 8 earthquakes averaging a magnitude 5.3. We also have Japan, which accounted for 6 magnitude 5 earthquakes. The average being a 5.1. Outside of the Ring of Fire, the most notable within this category was a 5.6 that hit Romania on Friday. September the 23rd. The National Earth Physics Institute said the quake hit at 2.11 a.m. local time, and its epicenter was in the eastern Varancia region, which is known for its seismic activity. There were reports of minor damage and injuries in the city of Yossi. Emergency Situations official Sylvia Bolahan told National News Agency Ajapers two people suffered minor injuries there. She said Plaster fell off one building, 
and there were reports of objects falling in people's homes. Some residents spent the night outside. A dozen people called emergency services after suffering panic attacks. The quake was also felt in the capital Bucharest, the central city of Brasov, and the southern city of Craiova. We registered 99 magnitude 4 earthquakes. This was also an increase when compared to the previous week. In fact, a 22% difference. Seismic swarms were limited to the usual locations which include Indonesia with 19 earthquakes, Japan with 19 as well. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the states. We'll start with Hawaii, which registered 61 earthquakes, with the strongest being a 3.2 on Friday, September the 23rd which originated from the volcano. Alaska experienced a 36% increase in earthquakes when compared to the previous week. 529 were registered with the strongest to strike being a magnitude 4.8 that hit Akutane. Washington registered 35. The most intense being a 2.7 that hit Sequim. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington was a 1.1. Sequim just so happens to be our location of interest. Sequim is a city in Clallam County, Washington, United States. A population of 6,606 was estimated as of the 2000 census. Sequim is located along the Dungeness River near the base of the Olympic Mountains. The city has been increasing in population dramatically in recent years due to the influx of retirees from the Puget Sound region and California. Sequim lies within the rain shadow of the Olympic Mountains and receives on average less than 16 inches of rain per year. Yet, interestingly enough, the city is fairly close to some of the wettest temperate rainforests of the contiguous United States. Fossils discovered in the late 1970s at a dig known as the Moni's Mastodon site, near Sequim, by Carl Gustafson, an archaeologist at Washington State University included a mastodon bone with an embedded bone point, evidencing the presence of hunters in the area about 14,000 years ago. According to Michael R. Waters, an archaeologist at Texas A&M University, this discovery is the first hunting weapon found that dates to the pre-Clovis period. Oregon's earthquake activity, once again, remained largely unchanged when compared to the previous week's data. We experienced 10 quakes in total. The strongest registered was a 2.1 in Vernonia on Friday, September the 23rd. California experienced 655 earthquakes. This boils down to roughly 93 being experienced per day. The most powerful recorded was a 3.1 in Avenal, a 3.1 in Yosemite Valley, and a 3.0 in Gardena. Swarm activity was limited to Mammoth Lakes with 117 earthquakes, the Geysers with 67, and Cobb with 61. Nevada registered 166 earthquakes last week. The strongest experienced was only a 2.8 that struck Alamo. Swarm activity was limited to the usual locations including Hawthorne with 69 earthquakes and Betty with 24. Idaho registered 10 all week. The most intense to strike was a 2.7 which struck just south of the Tamarack Ridge. Swarm activity was primarily center in Malay City, which experienced four quakes. Montana experienced 77 earthquakes. The most intense registered was 2.5 that struck West Yellowstone. Swarm activity was primarily centered around Whitehall, which registered 16 earthquakes, and West Yellowstone which clocked in 15. Wyoming registered 11 earthquakes last week. The strongest recorded was a 1.5 that hit the Old Faithful Geyser. Utah raked in 18. The strongest reported was a 2.3 in Beaver. Our pals in Texas experienced, yet again, another unusual earthquake. This being a 2.4 that hit Irving on Thursday, September the 22nd. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, it was about 5 miles deep. 
This Templar is the latest in a string that have hit the area near the site of the old Texas Stadium since October 2014. That's very, very interesting. Kansas experienced 10. The strongest being a 3.2 in Ellis. Not to be left out, we also experienced a 3.2 in Harper. Oklahoma clocked in an outstanding 65 earthquakes. The strongest experienced was a 3.9 in Medford, a 3.4 in Langston, a 3.2 in Cherokee and Pawnee. The New Madrid seismic fault experienced movement as well. This includes four earthquakes that hit Missouri. The strongest being a 2.0 and a 1.3 in Steele, and a 1.5 in New Madrid and a 1.5 in Lilburn. We should also note that Tiptonville and Ridgely, Tennessee experienced movement along the New Madrid. These were a 1.7 and a 1.2. The North American Craton also experienced movement as well. This includes a rare magnitude 2.4 earthquake that hit Dalton, Georgia on Thursday the 22nd, another unusual earthquake which was experienced in Pikeville, Kentucky on Thursday as well. This was a 2.2. Finally, Ringwood, New Jersey registered a 0.5 on the 20th of September. Before turning our focus to our allies to the north, let's head south to Florida, where a magnitude 3.8 was experienced off the coast of St. Augustine Beach on Wednesday the 21st. There are no newspaper reports of this event and hardly any mention of what took place online. I suspect this was a test conducted by the Navy. Similar readings have been logged just this year and it came to light then, the Navy was performing a hull test on a new vessel. Finally, our Canadian allies experienced seismic movement as well. 14 earthquakes in total. The most notable being a 4.4 in Port Hardy. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Feel free to post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe and share this video. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star. 